YouTube as it going the goat house is back with an updated two round NFL mock draft. We got a big trade in here. Uh, this is our pre free agency mock draft free agency coming up here uh, on Monday actually. So this is before all the big signings happen. Then once we get the first wave underway, we'll make another mock draft and there'll be different top needs of course for each team after free agency. We have you covered fully through that free agency grading every signing, every big trade. We talk about the breaking news on Twitter, give you my thoughts instantly. So you're going to want to subscribe to the channel, follow that Twitter link in the comment section for anything you need. We've been doing a lot of member mock drafts, keeping you guys involved around the channel. We use walkthemock.com, which you see underneath me. It's the best draft simulator. Everyone can control a team uh, at once and we can do trades, everything. So check it out. If you sign up, use code GOATHOUSE. Very important there. Ends up being cheap and well worth it here in draft season um here's our here's our twitter just constant updates on everything nfl talking orlando brown trade recently that's a possibility keeping you guys updated on everything uh so check it out at Godhouse nfl let's get to the mock uh we'll explain all these picks we don't really need to explain trevor lawrence much anymore um yeah that's what i'm projecting the pick to be pretty wild if they don't take him uh, cause that's what everyone's expecting. Still like Zach Wilson, the jets makes sense. It just still got the feeling that there, you know, there's some people, some people out there that believe they may roll Sam Darnold. I think they're keeping them for now. They're trying to get teams to kind of flood in and get desperate. We need a quarterback, you know, it, it, it's worth a shot there. They better not hold on too long cause teams are going to get their quarterback and then they're going to lose leverage. So, but I, I love Zach Wilson for them. You know, it's going to be like a Shanahan type, uh, system over there. Makes a lot of sense. Dolphins go Jamar Chase. They trade for Isaiah Wilson. That tells us a little bit. Doesn't tell us a whole lot because it's no guarantee that he's going to be on the field there at right tackle. Uh, and who knows? Maybe, I don't think so, but maybe they're already moving on from Austin Jackson. Not moving on from him, but they realize, okay, we can get a lot better at left tackle with a guy like Penny Sewell. It's all a possibility. It just start, it starts to strengthen the argument towards a guy like Jamar Chase. I do think they'll like Jalen Waddle and even Devontae Smith. Um Trade back could be possible, but if you trade back and you really want, you know, a trade back would say it's not Jamar Chase. Um, but I think they stick here and grab him as the best receiver prospect in some time, you know, maybe since Julio Jones. So Dolphins grab him for Tua. They're all in, it feels like, on Tua as well, unless that's smoke. I don't think so. Trade. Chargers trade up with the Falcons. I'd say it's a it's a future first round pick here, and then maybe some mid round picks involved, but you know, the bad thing with the Chargers would be out of a 2022 first-round pick in a deal like this. The Falcons would grab that, but the Chargers, their defense is ready to win now. Justin Herbert showed that he can win now. They have the weapons at receiver and running back, of course. They just need the offensive line. They kind of need a lot of it, but if you get a guy of Penny Sewell's caliber, happen to play with Justin Herbert at Oregon, that's kind of a bonus, um, then you're set at what is most important position that you need, one of the most important positions of football, left tackle. So you do give up that future first, um, but it could be worth it. It's risky, though, because what if they have a little off year with, you know, with their new coaching staff and, um, you know, sophomore year for Justin Herbert. So it is risky. What if you're giving up a pretty valuable pick, but you're getting a damn valuable player in Penny Sewell in a huge position, a much-needed position. So they trade up to get him right before the Bengals. The Bengals grab Rashawn Slater. Really, you can flip these guys. It could be Slater, then Sewell. I, I think the Chargers would prefer Sewell. I, I prefer Sewell. It's pretty It's pretty damn close. Um, but Rashawn Slater has his workout, shows the athleticism he has, but on the field he shows both the athleticism, the ability to get to that next level of the field and make some big, big key blocks, but he also shows his power as well. Pretty complete prospect here I think it'd be a damn good tackle uh some view him as a guard I think it'd be could be a pro bowl guard so we'll see it depends on who drafts a team like the Bengals draft him probably putting him at tackle Jonah Williams could either play right tackle or he can also play guard uh I have Kyle Pitts to the Eagles here Zach Ertz will be traded they do have Goddard but you know they value having multiple tight ends two tight ends out there at once but Pitts is also a receiver that big body receiver that they can use to pair with Jalen Rager for the future so I thought that made sense on multiple levels there I was also thinking other receivers but you know this just made more sense to me um so they they Get Pitts in there with, like I said, with Rager. They get some other guys that can play as well, but those will be the two for the future mainly. Um, and you got Goddard and you got Jalen Hurts, and it's just some good targets for Hurts. Big, big Kyle Pitts fan, top three on my board. 
Uh, this would be a great pick for the Eagles. Lions go Devontae Smith. They're moving on from Kenny Galladay. It feels like they're bringing Tyrell Williams, the one-year deal. It's not no guarantee with him. They desperately need receivers. Devontae Smith's a guy that you can scheme things up for, kind of fits in a Jared Goff type offense, you know, kind of what they would Goff do with McVay. Um, so that that pick, it's a good fit, you know, and it's a good pick too. So that would make some sense. Panthers, Panthers are a tough one because, you know, it really feels like they want to find their their quarterback within uh, the offseason, you know, itself or within, you know, already in the league. So really maybe not the draft. They tried to trade this pick already for Stafford. So you could see they weren't maybe overly thrilled doesn't mean they didn't like these prospects but they weren't overly thrilled with the idea of grabbing one of these rookie prospects you know but it doesn't mean they don't like them maybe they just like Stafford a little more that's all that really means but they're they were they're shooting for Deshaun Watson still kind of feels unlikely anybody lands him but it's definitely possible um but yeah sitting here I think they'll like Justin Fields in that Joe Brady offensive system there um so I think they would kind of have to at this point but we'll see if they fill that quarterback need also teams have been Kind of calling about Bridgewater, but they're not they're 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 not you know going that deep in discussions because they feel like they may need him. So I, I don't know if that you know the draft's very unpredictable. So it doesn't really necessarily mean they just don't want a rookie quarterback. It's just they don't know if a guy like Justin Fields will be there, which I guess makes sense. That's definitely a tricky team though. Um, they could go offensive line, Penny Sewell and Slater off the board though, so that makes it tough. I I am a big fan of Christian Darsaw, so that's actually a, that's actually a sneaky pick there. That could happen, a sleeper pick there. Uh, moving on in the next two picks, Broncos could go quarterback here. Thought about Mac Jones, Trey Lance, uh, but they really need that cornerback to make that defense elite, and they'll like Caleb Farley there from Virginia Tech. Uh, Cowboys another corner, Patrick Sertan, uh, pair it with Trevon Diggs, his former teammate, so they grab their cornerback there. And the Giants take Jim Lotto, a guy that can also go in the top 10, ends up in this scenario falling down a little bit. The Giants grab him. They got a lot of speed now at receiver with that pick. So in the 49ers, you know, Trey Lance is still sitting there. We had some quarterbacks drop in this scenario, which is possible. Um, and 49ers get their guy of the future. Maybe he sits a year behind Garoppolo. I think, you know, if you take him, it might be better if you start him right now. Um, you know, so I think Shanahan will kind of like this, not really a project, but it's a, it's a little bit of a project, you know, it's not like a project in a bad way, but like a fun project where it, it could definitely boost the future. You know, how much does it help you right now? It depends on if you play him, but, uh, you know, I think with him sitting here at 12, I don't think you can pass him. Falcons trade back at that future first and Jason away, the edge rush from Penn state, um, a ton of upside, you know, will he make a huge impact right away? And that would be the argument him against, you know, against him going this high. But his athleticism, his upside, his strength, you know, he put on a performance at his workout running in the four threes. And I know people, there's there's a certain selection of certain group of people out there that freak out about uh, guys going high because of their 40 time specifically. It's not really their 40 time. It shows the upside to have their speed on the field. You know, you don't specifically say that 40 time, you know, it, it kind of gives you an idea of what he can do on the field. And, and it's just, if people don't like it, you don't have to like it if guys, you know, run fast and they go higher in the draft. You don't have to like it, but at the end of the day, especially at the edge rush position, uh, people within the league take this stuff seriously. You know, they want to work with these guys. Dean Pease, great defensive mind, brought in there in the Atlanta Falcons. He fits the scheme. Work with him, opposite of Dante Fowler Jr. Um, you know, you just don't see pass rushers that freaky every day with that upside. You know, maybe they won't make that big impact, but I'm telling you, you know, these guys that with the freak athleticism, they are going to go higher than you think. You know, people want, especially at the edge rush position. Teams, coaches want to work with these guys. You know, tons of upside. So that's definitely a guy to look out for now to go way earlier than expected. Uh, so I, I could see him fitting with the Falcons. I can see them, you know, the Falcons wanting to work with that type of pass rusher there. Uh, the Vikings go Christian Darso. I think it's an excellent fit. They actually just cut Riley Reef. Was it yesterday? Uh, so they're looking for their left tackle of the future. This guy's a dominant, dominant run blocker. It's exactly what the Vikings want. He definitely fits their zone scheme. Um, it's almost like a dream scenario for the Vikings there. It's possibly can be there. Like I said, though, he can go as early as maybe the Panthers pick around there. Uh, so in this scenario, I had the quarterbacks drop, and like I said, Lance and Mac Jones. So Mac Jones actually falls right in the Patriots' lap. You know, talk about they may have to trade up for him, but in this scenario, uh, he fell right to them. So that'd be ideal for uh, Mac Jones and the Patriots there. Cardinals go Elijah Vera Tucker. They need interior help. It started to fade at the end of last year. 
Uh, Vera Tucker could play tackle. I think he's going to be a dominant guard, though. So I think the Cardinals will like to have him keep Kyler Murray protected from the interior there. Uh, the interior pressure was really showing up down the stretch of the season. Uh, next group of picks, Raiders go Quiddy Pay, so he's still sitting around there at 17. Um, you know, and they they grab him. You know, pair him with Max Crosby. They also have Cleveland Farrell, but at the end of the day, they just need they just need more pass rush. I had Mark, uh, Micah Parsons falling a little bit, and um, which sounds like it's starting to be. You know, I mean, you look at the scenario what went ahead before. I mean, some people are probably like Parsons not going to drop that far. I'm not guaranteed he drops that far, but you see what I had going on ahead of him. You can't really say, you know, those guys for sure won't go that high. You see, this is a realistic scenario. So this is kind of the Kyle Van Noy replacement. You know, I think he can bring, uh, Parsons can bring a lot of, uh, you know, pass rush presence, even as an off-the-ball linebacker, extremely rangy. So and the Dolphins will love to have him uh, as a Van Noy replacement there. Washington grabs Rashad Bateman. You know, they definitely need a receiver. Let's see if they get in the free agency and grab one. And, you know, maybe they don't take one in the first round. Though. But Bateman... Fantastic athlete, great footwork, and playing a slot outside. It's a guy that I think can make an instant impact here. Washington grabs him. Um, the Bears moved on from Bobby Massey and uh, you know looking for the replacement here. Tevin Jenkins sounds like his stock is going up. Uh, you know, a mean, powerful right tackle. Um, you know, and it sounds like in the off season he's gotten more athletic, more in shape too. So that's good. So I think the uh, the Bears would like him at right tackle there, um, day one. Colts, they need their left tackle. I think they target one of these guys in free. They're almost going to have to because there, there is, you know, and some Colts fans or whoever it is kind of, you know, when I don't have them taking a left tackle, they kind of get on me. But, you know, I don't like any of the fits, especially at 21 overall right here. It doesn't. It's just too much of a reach or they don't fit. I think they have to solve this in free agency. More left tackles are getting cut. Eric Fisher, Riley Reef. Two guys I think could fit. Maybe they go big for Trent Williams. It's pretty pricey, though. They do have the cap space, but they may spend elsewhere. Uh, I think Ballard will like Jalen Phillips. They need edge rush just as much as tackle. They need edge rush. Uh, they need it in any ways. Justin Houston, also a free agent. They need it badly. Phillips is day one the best pass rusher in this class. If he's healthy, I trust him staying healthy. Um, and the Colts will as well. So that would be a big-time pick. Titans, uh, I think they solve their pass rush in free agency. I think they're going to have to. Uh, they would like Phillips could be off the board at this point because of his talent level, you know, day one. Uh, but the Titans, they cut Malcolm Butler. They could use a corner. They could have a Dory Jackson and Fulton play there, but Dory Jackson just seems like he can't finish a whole entire season here. Uh, J.C. Horn is right there with the other big corners, and the Titans would love to have him. Very physical corner, not afraid to come up and tackle. The only concern, really, is... Um, he does get pretty grabby. You know, he's going to get the PI call. So that is the concern. Other than that, the talent wise, he's top tier here in this class. Um, I, can, I, I have this pick uh, multiple times here Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa to the Jets, and you don't really see it too often, but this. This is kind. Of, this is Robert Salah's Fred Warner, that coverage linebacker. It feels like all the Jets linebackers, they got some decent linebackers, but it feels like they're all the off-the-ball linebackers I'm talking. It feels like they're all the same exact style linebacker. You know, they need that 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 athletic, rangy coverage linebacker in there, you know, that you can get unique with. I think that's pretty big. You know, they may have bigger needs at this point, but I think it's such a good fit, and it just helps that defense so much. That I, you know, I think it makes sense, and I think the two linebackers here, Micah Parsons and Jeremiah Wusu Karamoa, these guys are the rangiest guys in the draft. And I'm not really on the field, but I wasn't actually talking about that. I, I'm talking. They can go in the top ten. Both of them can go one or the other. Both can go in the top ten, or they can go around here. It, it's these are the guys I'm looking forward to see where they actually land here. But I love the fit here. Jalen Mayfield uh, could start day one at right tackle for the Steelers. I think he could be a heck of a guard as well. Either way, that's going to help the Steelers most definitely. I would love that fit. That would be a good pick for the Steelers. Uh, next group of picks, Jaguars get their safety. Uh, Trevon Merrig, we'll see if they address that in, in free agency, but they could use two of them, really. Merrig, really good split safety. He's the best free safety and the best strong safety in this class. Heck of a talent there. Uh, the Browns go Greg Rousseau, uh, edge rusher from Miami, another freak upside guy, crazy length. So the Browns, you know, pair, you know, him with uh, the upside guy who was also good instantly in Miles Garrett, but crazy that they that he is, still has upside there. Um, so maybe just too good to pass here. The Ravens, 
Um, you know, they could go line, they can go receiver. I just think Aziz Adjulari is such a perfect fit in their scheme. Uh, really good off the edge, especially in their 3-4. But he is familiar with dropping back in coverage, and he's pretty damn good at it, sticking on somebody in coverage. And that's pretty important for the Ravens scheme. They blitz the inside linebackers, having the edge drop back in coverage. So that's why it's so important there. Uh, the Saints go Greg Newsom. Greg Newsom should be a first-round pick. Uh, I'm on record saying I'm sticking to it. I would rather take a corner like Greg Newsom around here if you can get him early second then use one as a top then then use a top 10 pick on one I'd much rather do this would love the fifth the Saints and Greg Newsom they cut Janoris Jenkins this morning um, we knew that was a possibility but I thought they would maybe keep him because seven million was the savings for Janoris Jenkins and you think can you actually get better at cornerback with seven million and the answer is is no in free agency so their plan uh, I think is to go into the draft and get somebody that could be just as good as or better right away. Do some be a heck of a pick for them. Uh, the Packers go corner as well. I think they'll like Eric Stokes. He helped his stock with his um, his season was uh, you know better than expected, very productive, and um, he helped the stock as well with his workout running in the four twos at his forty. Uh, so pair him with Alexander It'd be fantastic. The Bills cut John Brown, so they need to kind of get younger and recoup that speed to be able to match the Chiefs, compete with the Chiefs. There you go, Kadarius Toney. Uh, Elijah Moore would make sense as well, but uh, Beasley's kind of got control of that slot role, so I think Toney makes makes uh, a bit of sense. He can kind of do both there. So um, would love this for the Bills. The Chiefs cut both their tackles this morning, so they need a tackle. Um, maybe a trade-up, maybe to settle, to settle something in free agency, the offseason here before the draft, but Samuel Cosby would make some sense there. Christian Barmore falls in the Buccaneers' lap, uh, potentially could replace Ndamukong and Sue here. That would be a heck of a pick. So there's our first round picks. We're on the second round picks. Some good players still left. Uh, the Jags go Wyatt Davis, Ohio State guy. That they, they at one point we we thought maybe they need a left tackle. They're going to bring Cam Robinson back. They're going to cut or trade Andrew Norwell. Uh, so they need a guard. Actually, Wyatt Davis would definitely help them in that category. Elijah Moore, who I think probably should be a first round pick. Such good footwork. You scheme things up for him. He, he's got that explosive uh, big playability after the catch. And the Jets would like him, you know, pairing him with the guy like Zach, you know, Zach Wilson there would be uh, fantastic. Uh, and the Falcons go running back. They can go any direction with their running back here. They go Travis Etienne. I think his upside as a pass catcher, I think maybe results in him going first. Uh, and the Dolphins grab their running back and Najee Harris, another Bama guy there for them. Uh, and the Eagles go Nick Bolt, another guy that I think should be a first round pick, uh, you know, high motor, super instinctive, uh, you know, tackling machine Eagles. Love to have him. They need upgrades across the whole linebacker unit. Uh, the Bengals still get – they don't get Jamar Chase. They still get an LSU receiver for Joe Burrow. It's very important they have three uh, receivers that they have the ability to start. And then so here's your third guy after Boyd and T. Higgins and Terrace Marshall, which I think is a really good fit. T. Higgins is strictly outside guy. Tyler Boyd is, I think, the best slot receiver in football, but he also can play outside. Terrace Marshall is kind of – Similar to Tyler Boyd, but is, is almost the opposite in the same way because Tyler Boyd's going to play in the slot most of the time, but again, he can play outside. Terrace Marshall's going to play outside more of the time, but also can play in the slot, so you kind of can flip those at times. So that made sense to me. Trey Smith, uh, Panthers grab him from the interior. He also can play tackle if you need him to, but I think he starts at guard for them. Broncos get Ronnie Perkins. We'll see what they do. Still a decision to come on Von Miller of picking up his option. I'm kind of leaning towards they, they pick it up, but we'll see. Um, but even if they do pick it up, they, they kind of need a guy of the future there as well. Uh, Ronnie Perkins has, has a shot to sneak in the first round. I think he fits either scheme. Uh, very good stop and a run, and I think he'll be way more productive as a pass rusher than he was in college. They ran him on a lot of stunts, um, which I think took away from his production, so it wasn't really his fault. Uh, so I would like him for, for uh, Vic Fangio's scheme there. Uh, Jamin Davis from Kentucky getting a lot of buzz. Uh, very athletic, good stop and a run, very rangy, can drop and cover. I think the Lions will like him. They're looking at another linebacker. I think they'll view him as more of a fit than some of these other guys. Uh, the Giants take Zayvon Collins. I would like that fit there in their scheme. He'd probably start inside. They'd blitz him a ton, but he has the ability to play off the edge and rush as well. So that kind of helps the Giants. You can plug him, you know, opposite Lorenzo Carter. You can plug him opposite of Blake Martinez um you can do both really throughout a game so I, I think that would be I think it would benefit from a guy like that adding a guy like that Sante Samuel Jr. love the fit for the 49ers scheme uh they play a lot of cover three I think Samuel will thrive get a lot of create a lot of turnovers uh in that scheme so I love the fit there 
Levi Anuzorke from Washington. Um, you know, he's going to provide some interior pressure, exactly what the Cowboys need. Uh, the Jags grab a nose tackle in here, the best nose tackle in the class. And then Lee McNeil from NC State. Patriots go receiver Tyler Walls. I th- you know, I think he's got Patriots written all over him. So I, I think uh, another guy that could be a sleeper sneak in the end of the first round, very athletic, gets open, good footwork. Uh, we'll try to, you know, he, he's tough to bring down after the catch. He'll try to run you over. Um, so I think the Patriots will like him. Joe Tryon, another guy that can sneak in the first round, athletic pass rusher that'll fit uh, Staley's scheme here uh, for the Chargers. Raiders go Davion Nixon. They're looking for interior pressure, uh, and they grab that with uh, with Nixon, could play that three-technique role and could slide around a bit. Um, and moving on to the end of the second round here, Cardinals grab that corner. They need Calvin Joseph from Kentucky, former LSU top recruit. Um, had a really good year. Uh, with the uh, Kentucky defenders, pretty good. That defense, it won't really show because they didn't have the best year. But, you know, and they gave up points. It's because who they're playing against. But that defense was actually really good. Some studs on that defense. Uh, Dolphins get another Bama guy, Landon Dickerson. That's kind of their last need there at the offensive line, that center position. Uh, so that would be fantastic for them. Alex Leatherwood. Some talk about him playing guard, but he could play that left tackle, obviously. Uh, Washington grabs him. I think I had this before. Um, Kellen Mond to the Bears, you know, I think potentially could be a starting quarterback. A lot of upside. I kind of been hyping him up from some time. Now everyone's trying to jump on board there. You know, the traits are there. The athleticism is there. It, he, you see the flashes, but you see inconsistency. But with the right team working with him, um, he could become special. Uh, Titans take Rondale Moore again. I think they have to solve their edge rush issue with within free agency so they don't have to, like, scramble for it in the draft unless a guy like Jalen Phillips is there. That's fantastic. In the first round, I talked about that. Rondell Moore, who has a chance to go late first, he could go around here as well. The concern with him is, you know, he didn't have the biggest route tree. It's just kind of like you run here, we throw you the ball. It pretty much wasn't any specific routes. He only ran to certain spots of the field a lot, and that's a risky, risky pick. Um, but there's so much upside. That speed kills, and he's putting on a lot of strength as well while, while keeping that speed. So that shows upside. There's probably teams that will have him great as late first, and there's probably teams that wouldn't even touch him in the second. You know, it's going to be all over the board with him. Uh, Colts still get a good left tackle here. Liam Eichenberg, who's going to be a dominant run blocker right away, but could drop a little bit. Steelers get a solid running back. I think the best fit for them is Javante Williams. Big Javante Williams guy here. Um, I think the best pure runner in the class right now. I think it's a matter of getting him the ball through the air. The other guy's Got that opportunity at college. You know, when Williams got that opportunity, I thought he looked pretty good. Seahawks get Dylan Verdun, so he can start right tackle for them or at guard, so it could help them either way there, whatever they decide to do. Joseph Asai, I view as a fit for the Rams defensive scheme. He can start off the edge. He also can play inside and um, use him as an off-the-ball linebacker, as a blitzer, so uh, that can help them. Maury Rogers, uh, you know, helped himself with his workout. Very productive slot receiver. Uh, the Ravens could be looking to uh, kind of upgrade from that Willie Sneed role, and they can really benefit from that. Uh, the Browns go Jabril Cox, very good coverage linebacker, helps the Browns out here. Saints get a pass rusher. They're probably going to lose Trey Hendrickson. They need Davenport to step up, but they'll value having another pass rusher here, um, and that's Carlos Basham. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I, I see him playing defensive end in either scheme. I could see him playing even 3 4 end in a different scheme, but 4 3 end here for the Saints. Bills go Tyson Campbell from Georgia. Uh, upgrade that cornerback opposite of Tredavious White. The Packers grab their receiver in Amon St. Brown from UFC. Uh, USC there, and then the Chiefs grab an interior offense line, and they grab the uh, the tackle uh, before. They, they could double up on the tackles here. I'm sure they grab one in free agency, though, because they did open up the holes there. And they do have Lucas Nang coming back from TCU. I kind of like that pick. But Aaron Banks uh, from Notre Dame, a guy that can play guard or center, that's uh, pretty appealing for the Chiefs. And the Buccaneers take Kyle Trask, so maybe a future quarterback to learn um, behind Tom Brady. Once thought of as a first-round quarterback, but it's kind of slipping through a little bit. But it could be a pretty good pick for a team like the Buccaneers. Um, you know, they, they, we'll see what happens to Franzi with them. You know, with Shaq Barrett or not, they could potentially have a giant need at the edge rush position, but... We will see. We'll have you covered for all that free agency news on our Twitter here on the channel. So I'm really looking for that. And now we're in that mode. And then once that first wave goes through, uh, we'll pretty much be in draft mode. And we'll see the different needs, you know, teams that filled the certain needs. Not that you have to draft off your biggest need, you know, in order. That's just something I don't agree with or something that doesn't always happen at all. Uh, but it definitely, free agency definitely changes things. So we'll, ha- we'll be here with our updates, of course. Uh, but that is going to do it for this one. Again, please subscribe, smash that like button, smash, uh, I already said that, uh, turn notifications on, and then make sure you follow the Twitter.
All that would be much appreciated. It's definitely important at this time of the year with the constant NFL news going on. But that is gonna do that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks everyone for watching. Goodbye.